Oh my god, look at this. Oh, this is nice. Tri spikes wrapped with the Kestrel. Oh, thank you, Axie gods. What's going on, Axie fam? I just want to say that I shot this video about a week ago, and a lot has changed since then. So I'm going to leave it as it is for the most part, but I want to point out that when I made this breeding video, a big part of it was highlighting that by doing the math, the average cost was around 0.1 Ethereum to breed once you factor in all the fees. So I wanted to show that if you were breeding the right types of Axies, it was still profitable even in this crazy market that we're in. Since then, the market market has changed, floor prices have come down a little bit, and also most importantly, the team at Axie Infinity has dropped some bombshells by saying if you have juvenile axes that you don't need to be adult soon, you should keep them as larvas and petites and wait until Ronin Phase 2 launches. I mean, this is incredibly exciting. I believe we're very, very close to moving into Ronin Phase 2. So I just want to say all that to suggest that it's probably a good idea to hold off on any immediate breeding that you want to do. But I still loved what I uh, managed to capture because I do focus on just my thought process in terms of like what I'm trying to do to create successful breeds and I hope you have fun watching me unveil these nine first axes that I have bred together it was so much fun to make this video so just a heads up be patient I think Ronan's on the way I'll have plenty other breeding videos in the future that can cover profits and market dynamics and things like that as always thanks for watching I hope you guys enjoy the video What's going on Axie fam? Elijah here back with another video and today we've got something completely new that we're doing. We're going to be going over breeding, one of the coolest aspects of the game. But I'm going to just share with you what I did in my first breed effort here, okay? So this is like really the first batch of Axies that I've bred. I tried to keep things fairly simple and do stuff that I thought would be relatively safe and avoid any catastrophes in terms of like turning out something that's going to just be very difficult to sell. You can go to axie.zone. Once you're there, you'll see it on the front page, breeding simulator, and then you take the axie ID of two different axes, whatever you're thinking of breeding, and you enter them in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the two that I'm planning on breeding in this video. So we'll have this uh, discard bug that I currently own, and then I'm going to be buying this axie and breeding it with it. So once I enter those numbers in, I can hit breed, and it's gonna give me you know, a rough idea of what this can turn out. It's kind of fun because I can keep hitting breed and it'll keep turning out different possibilities. What's probably even more useful than seeing these you know, hypothetical axes that get turned out is looking at the odds. Now what I'm trying to do here is replicate one of these builds and I can see that I'll get Pinsir 87% of the time, Parasite 84. That's huge because I'm basically trying to create a double discard breed and both of those are essential for that build. Um, I Ideally, I want the high damage card on the back, not the snail shell, but the snail will sell as well. Again, more of a rarity and also just a very interesting, cool closer to have in a game. And then, you know, it's 50-50 on whether I get fish snack or gravel lamp, which I'm pretty happy with. So this is something that you can learn to use as you understand the game better, understand the cards better. And as with everything else in Axie Infinity, use the Discord as a resource. Go in there, ask people, hey, look, I'm thinking about breeding these two Axies. Is it a good idea? And, you know, wait until you get a bunch of feedback to maybe go forward with your decision if you're unsure about what move you're making. So I thought it would be fun in this video if I went ahead and morphed all of these axes to see what we have gotten from our first batch of breeding. What happens when you breed is you get an egg. It takes about, I think, a day to turn into a larva. Now there's nothing you need to do for that to happen. That happens naturally. I had to wait till April 11th for it to become petite. Now once it's petite, which is what it is now, I can morph it into that. And that's when I'll get to see what cards I've got, what move set I've got. And now this morph will cost gas, and then morphing it one more time into an adult will also cost a gas fee. Okay, so we did a lot of matchmaking. We have some tri spikes reptiles we threw together. We took my Kestrel reptile backliner. I bred that I think twice with this other reptile that has hot butt. Basically, I'm going for a very rare breed here, which is Kestrel and hot butt on the backliner. That means you can disable horn cards and you can disable their mouth cards all at once with having, you know, Chomp and a zero cost card. It's a sick build. It's probably not super likely I get it, but I was going for it and then with my aqua breeds i bred my one-of-a-kind perch aqua a couple times with another one that has nemo and you know some nice aqua cards to potentially turn out another very 
sick perch aqua build. These are rare. I know they're going to sell. And even if I don't quite hit the perch, I'm going to get a solid set of aqua cards, given that they're both pure aquas. And again, I'm trying to make relatively safe plays here. I'm not getting complicated and breeding, you know, an aqua with a beast or something weird like that. I haven't ventured into that arena yet. You got to be very careful with that stuff. And then I had some super basic plant breeds because this is uh, just given the genetics, this is actually super likely to print out another yam pumpkin tank which is just gonna be quite easy to sell on the market as those are always in demand so let's just do this i'm gonna morph all of these once that's done i'll be right back and we can look through each one what the parents were and what we got as a result so this is actually super exciting i can't wait to do this and share it with you all right fam it has been done here are all of my petites newly morphed axes i'm so hyped let's start with our reptile up front our parents to this bad boy are two different tri-spikes reps, uh, one with piranha, one with a beast part. It turned out to be a bit of a mutt. We've got the jar. We do have kestrel, uh, goldfish, and piranha. So it's not really sure what it wants to be. It's definitely high damage, but we don't have the utility of like tri-spikes or a zero cost card. So really not exactly what we were looking for, although it will most certainly sell for that price point I talked about earlier between 0.1 to 0.15 Ethereum. Let's go ahead and move on to our bug. Now we Fingers crossed on this one. I bred a Terminator bug with a discard bug. I'm hoping for like a thorny discard bug. That would be insane. Let's see what we got. Uh, it looks as though we're gonna have, okay, another pure discard bug. We are definitely not mad about that. These are going for, you know what? Let's just find out what these are going for on the market. Wow, market prices have dropped significantly. So you can get one of these right now for 0.18 Ethereum um which i think is pretty low it is a five breed right so a version of this is going to go for significantly higher than that if i look at the floor for a zero breed that is now very high 0.36 so we're realistically looking at this range as our floor for selling this axi well, let's think about that if it costs us 0.1 ethereum to breed it we just turned a very nice profit in getting to sell this for near 0.4. You know, that's probably like $600 in profit or something around there. So we're thrilled about this one. And also what's cool is since it's a zero breed, if perhaps I don't want to sell it as a zero breed, I can now keep breeding it out for very, very low cost in SLP. So this is magnificent. I'm so hyped about this one aside from getting like a thorny discard bug this is about as nice as i could have asked for axie number three another reptile i believe i was going for the vine dagger um oh my god look at this oh this is nice tri spikes rep with the kestrel oh thank you axie gods so we're gonna have a beautiful midline reptile here so kestrel tri spikes reps they're very rare I don't even think there's any listed on the market right now. We have Iguana, uh, which is just a very powerful card. High shield, high damage, gain in energy. This is going to generate you an energy very often versus Aquas that play upstream swim and get the speed bonus or uh, swift escape as well. 44 speed. We're faster than all the 43 speed beasts. And I got to reiterate, uh, this is going to, if I don't want to play it, it is going to sell for a pretty penny on the market. Definitely worth our investment and our time in terms of deciding to breed those two axes. Okay, next up we have an aqua. I bred two pure aquas, so that means I'm going to get pure statistics. So the standard health and speed, 57 speed on this guy, and not bad. All right, so we don't get the perch, which is what I was really hoping for. But as I said, it's just gonna turn out a solid aqua, and this is one of them, Nemo. Um, you know, as you can see, I bred two axes with Nemo because I really wanted to uh, guarantee that we get that. We got Goldfish, Lamb, Babylonia, which gives us tons of shield and a damage bonus when we attack idle targets. So you can actually brick wall your axe with a card like this and, and Lamb. I can put up almost, you know, to almost 200 shield if I have the right combo of cards. So, wow. Okay, we will definitely take that. 
I will say looking at market prices and seeing how everything has dropped in terms of like really expensive axes being sold for less these days, uh, I do think you need to be maybe even a little extra careful. I know I'm getting nice runouts here, but for instance, this reptile that was kind of a flop, I'm pretty certain I actually don't get 0.15 Ethereum for it. I, I probably, if anything, can go 0.1 Ethereum if I'm lucky and break even on it. So don't be taking too many risks here um, because you might end up with uh, you know, losing outcomes and just be safe, cover yourselves. I think going for pure breeds is a safe bet in general. And I just wanted to highlight that moving on to our first plant. This should be quite straightforward. Ooh, that is spicy. I like that one. I don't have a hot soon plant. Now I do lots of shield, decent damage. And, um, we can also sort of slow down birds right in the early game, mid game, their cards will be disabled when they attack into this, uh, plant. Also with the leaf bug, we get tons of energy, never really have to worry about energy a little faster than what we would have liked. Uh, we like to be the slowest one out there, uh, with a plant so we can re-steal off of other plants when they steal our energy with Sirius. But again, solid one, happy about it. Okay, the next aqua breed is interesting. Okay, so I think I just sold one of these. Yeah, I did. I sold this guy earlier today, I think. It looks like we just completely replicated it. Not thrilled about this one. It's a nice high damage aqua, uh, but it's not doesn't have a zero cost. It's it's sort of lost in terms of what it's trying to do in the game. Should be able to though. Uh, break even at least or turn a nice little profit on it. Uh, next up, we got a reptile again here. Now this turned out to be a 43 speed reptile. Okay, interesting. Indian star, Serastis, tiny dino. Looks like it could have some closing potential. It could be very tough to face on the back line there. We don't have a zero cost, but in general, we'll treat Indian star as if that's the zero cost. So we'll always try and use that one to uh, negate stuns. I'd be curious to see what something like this was is going for on the market right now. Let me look that up real quick. Oof. Wow. Those are currently quite expensive and there's really very few to choose from and that's i think just because it's more of a rare rare build you don't see indian star all too often now if i want to sell it right now the only one you can get is 0.38 ethereum and mine is most certainly better because i'm a zero breed and i'm also faster by two speed okay the other plant breed we have okay that's what i like to see very pure 31 speed 59 health we've got the leaf bug yam we've replicated another yam leaf bug tank those are currently going for 0.19 and that is a i believe a six breed so you know at a zero breed we're probably looking at a 0.23 i mean that's that's a pretty high floor so Definitely stoked about that. I might just try and like go in a mass breed route with something like this now um, and try to create a bunch of axes. That's the other thing I want to mention is that with a little initial investment up front in the game, right? You can quickly become a breeder where you are pumping out axes. Obviously, it's better if gas it stays low like this and with ronin i think everything is going to change in terms of the dynamic including you know the prices that axes sell for i have no idea how that's going to shake out but my point is is that look this is two four six seven eight nine new axes in my inventory and i really did not have to spend that much to get them if i was to go out and buy all of these it would be a fortune compared to uh, what i've just done in breeding so yeah you do put money up up front in the game but even once you have five, six, seven axes, you can start breeding. You're going to earn the SLP. You can start regenerating axes. So it's just a magnificent system and game. And um, I'm just hyped that I get to do this now because this is the first time I've bred. Finally, uh, I believe this is the same exact type of aqua we saw earlier. Definitely not mad about it. Probably. Um, oh, no, actually, this has piranha. Yeah. So instead of lamb. We, we don't have quite as much shield, but we have a ton of damage. Uh, we'll see what I want to do. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of going to have to regather myself and figure out what I want to just keep pumping out in terms of breeding, what I want to sell, what I want to play with. Ah, the options. It's a beautiful thing, Axie Infinity. So I think that about wraps up this video. The final thing I'm going to do is go ahead and make a purchase. I'm going to pick up this bug. This is what Indez is running with my build that I created, which is the tri spikes at mid and the discard bug in the back. He's optimized it as you know, that's not really a surprise considering how amazing of a player he is. He's thrown this in the back. He also runs one with thorny. So I'm actually going to splurge a bit today and 
buy this. But my plan here is to snatch this up so that I can breed it. Uh, I was gonna breed it with my discard bug, which I've only bred once. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll run one breed so I can show you exactly what that process looks like. Now, bear in mind that when you're shopping for axes, you always want the one that is uh, lower on the breed count because that's gonna cost you less in SLP. So I believe that a virgin costs 200 SLP to breed. Uh, or if you're breeding two virgins together, it's 100 for each one. So 200 total, very, very affordable. As you move up in that, I think by five or six, it's like 1,000 SLP. It costs quite a bit more. So this is a three breed uh, out of seven, which isn't amazing, but it's such a rare axi that my options are limited. And I don't want to spend an extra 0.2 Ethereum to get a zero breed. So this is the one that I will be picking up. Okay, so now that I have the two bugs I wanna breed, uh, and again, I've already mapped out that I wanted this combo because I went over to Axie Zone. I saw that if I put these together, very high chance of the double discard. Um, really nice back set, either Snail or Garish. We're aiming for Garish. It's rarer, it'll sell for higher, but we'll take either to be honest. But this again, looks relatively safe. Looks like a good investment in terms of what I can turn out. The steps in breeding are quite simple. I'll click this Axie, I can click either of them, and then I'll hit breed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just go with the one that's already an adult. Now that I have two discard bugs, I'll do this one here. I've bred this one other time before, so that total cost uh, comes out to 700 SLP, uh, which we're pretty happy about. That turns out to be $35 to breed two very powerful uh, and generally expensive axes. So for 35 bucks plus probably another 35 for gas, it'll be like, and then the morphs, that's looking at like $100 or so. So then an egg is gonna be delivered to me soon. All right, one more quick thing before I wrap this video up. This is future Elijah back again to jump into this portion of the video and look at what we ended up creating. So after breeding those two bugs together, we had to wait a few days, but we've arrived and we're able to see as a petite, we have an awesome Axie. So we pretty much bred out another discard bug that's very popular here with the snail shell, but instead of snail, we have garish worm, which is awesome. Because one thing I would like, and the reason that Indes runs a thorny version of this, which gets rid of fish snack, is partially to have options when it comes to damage, because you're kind of lacking with snail shell. I mean, it has its pros and cons. It's more durable in the late game, but in the early and mid, it can be difficult to get rid of that plant. So I love this variation. I can chew through the plant with two high damage bug cards. I think Garish does 133 with the bonus and uh, Parasite 120. We still have a lot of durability. We can brick wall with very high shield cards. We can defend against back doors while attacking. Uh, and we also have just, you know, the late game double discard threat, which removes so many possibilities for the opponent. So really, really happy about this breed. And I thought it'd be cool if I just jumped in and shared with you that that's what we got. So a really positive outcome. And I look forward to even taking this and breeding it with other bugs in the future. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a blast for me. I'm really excited to continue to explore breeding. Let me know if you want to see anything breeding related in the future, what type of content you want, because I'm certainly going to do more videos on it. And I think next time I'll have an OG Axie guest on to maybe shine some more light on this whole process. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I cover everything Axie Infinity related here. Follow me on Twitter. And yeah, thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.